Praise the Lord. Now, those who have questions and answers can come forward. Teach us your word, Lord. Teach us your word. We want to know your word, God. Teach us your word, Lord. Teach us your word. We want to know your word, Father. Teach us. We want to know your word, Lord. My God. Father, teach us. We want to know your word, my God. Father, teach us. To know your word, my God. Let's close eyes and talk to God about that. Teach us your word. Tell the Lord about it. Hear the right answer, the right questions, and answer your people to bless them. But if there is any good, let light shine. Let the truth of it happen. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Okay. At random, you can take line by line here and there and there and there. Come up. Praise the Lord. My name is Sixda Victoria from Plateau State. I have two questions to ask, sir. My first question is on the area we went for the study now about how to do business without committing sin and i have been disturbed since this time uh, since a while i've been looking for this opportunity to ask this question about some of us that own private clinic there are some cases that at times the way we we we, we used to compare the way government used to uh, uh, build the case with our own and at times seriously the thing used to disturb me maybe like in the surgical case now Maybe government are doing perforation, or, and that is laparotomy at the case of uh, 180,000. Then us, maybe we will say, to, since we have a doctor, visiting doctor that will come and do the case, at times we we'll collect more than that, at times we we'll collect less than that, and still the patient will still be complaining. So at that thing, at that place, I am really confused. And again, some, like where I'm working, Muslims are majority in that place. You will start by gaining from, even if you tell them it is 1,000, they will start to make you by gain, by gain, by gain, to the point that at times 
because of that bargain, you begin to cut very high. If you got high, they will, at, the, at the tail end, maybe what you wanted not to collect from their hand because of the bargaining, you end up collecting that one. And I'm confused. I said if I have opportunity, I will ask questions. I need clarification in that place. Then number two question is the area of storage. Many people used to say it's not good for a Christian to store good. At times, if I have mine, since in the place where I'm working, the things used to come out cheap. Then I would say, maybe let me store it. Then I will, uh, some of the members will be disqualifying me that it's not good as a Christian to do storage. So that's my question, sir. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, in economics, we are told that price is determined in the free market by demand and supply. The demand influences price. The supply also influences, influences price. You carried your goods to the market. Sometimes you don't know how much to sell it. It is the demand in the market that will, that will tell you how to sell it. That is different from cheating a person. Is that okay? Yes. It's different from cheating a person. When something could conveniently be done for 20,000, you say you should bring 200,000. Even your conscience will tell you that it is evil. But if something is to be done for 20,000, it might be within 30,000, maybe to 15,000, that radius. It can be done. It can even be done at 35,000, and it will be okay, as the demand will suggest the price in the free market. And two, there is no stable price. Sometimes you sell high to a customer. Sometimes you are forced to sell, sell low to a customer. But whichever way, when you find average, you should ensure you have not lost. That is uh, how to determine your price and run business. And you're not committing sin for doing that. What you do that is sin is when you begin to say, this is the price. God knows that I'm not telling you a lie. God knows. Some will even write some lying record and bring to show the customer. See it now. I did for this person this. I did for this person this. And it is a lying record. That is a sin. Is that okay? But now the operation ranges between 50,000 to 70,000 to 80,000. But you can also do for somebody at 40. You may even come to do for somebody at 30. You may come at 25, 20. It depends on how it is. This man, I did operation for him, no gain at all. But I must cure him. I am even at a loss. But somebody else, I did it for him for 40,000, for 80. I regain from this man. So that is business strategies. But to do an operation which is averaging 50,000 at 150,000, your conscience will affect you. So make sure you go according to the, uh, the principles of pure conscience. That you have not cheated people. It's within a range. Is that okay? Uh, what the Bible is speaking about is not storing goods, which is wisdom. Jo Joseph suggested that wisdom to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Because there is a year of plenty. If we don't preserve them, they will spoil. They will spoil. And when the year of scarcity comes, we will not have anything to help us. But let's store these ones in the year of plenty. So when human beings come to need, we release them. That is storing, which is very good. Storage is a very good business. You're helping the society. At the time, this particular crop gets, gets um, at the time of the harvest of that crop, you know, the price normally comes down and there can be great waste. A wise person says, let me buy and keep. At the time the goods get low in the market, I will bring it to supply to human beings. It's even the wisdom of God. 
But what the Bible creates is who are they? You have the materials, good. When people come to need it, you still refuse to release it. The people shall curse you. When they know you have it and you refuse now, purposely, is wickedness. It's no more in love of, human, of the society. You have the goods and everywhere there is starvation, there is hunger, there is all. The people are crying. That's why the Bible says, he that withholdeth the corn, the people shall curse him. You have it, you are not withholding. If, if when Jacob, Joseph rather, stole the, the food, food stuff, and people, the year of scarcity came, and he still refuses to release it, he would have been committing sin. But he released it. It relieved the people. It preserved the people from dying. Is that okay? It is who are they? Refusing to release when human beings are suffering that makes you a wicked man. Thank you. Is that clear to you? All right, the second person. Praise the Lord. My name is Blessing Eric Osman from River State Chapter. I have two questions to ask, Daddy. Number one, I want to know if it's good as a member of Orimo and I'm at age of marriage and a man is coming to seek my hand in marriage and he's not a member of Orimo. Is it good for me to take him to my chapter leader or what will I do? Then number two, a sister said, a sister, she's a member of Orimo, she said, somebody dashed her a roll-on. So she wants to know if it's good for her to use it or not. That is odorless. If it is odorless, it has, it, there's no offense in using it. Whether somebody dashes her or she goes to buy in the market. Now, you are a sister, a lady, a child of God. And somebody comes to marry you. And say, I want to marry you. Uh, should you marry the person? Well, I don't know your level of conviction in Horemo. I don't know what you believe in Horemo. I don't know. But should you accept the person? The paramount thing is that the person should be born again. A child of God, as a man. He should be born again. Number two. The next thing is that God should assure you to marry the person. And there should be evidence. There should be evidence that God has assured you. Number three, that you are willing to pass through the process of Christian marriage, going to the marriage committee to present the matter there, and you are backing it up with prayers. Now, the problem now is, which church is he from? Does the church serve God in righteousness and holiness? Is the brother willing to increase in the knowledge of the living God? Remember, holiness revival movement is not a church. Holiness revival movement is not a church. From any church you can be a member. Is the person interested to know more about God, to learn from holiness revival movement, the principles of righteousness? Is he interested or he's not interested? Because if he is interested in you, what makes you who you are is holiness revival movement. It's what you know. And it is freely available for him to partake. Freely available, no condition. He can also partake of it. Is he interested? 
The question now comes. Just come back and answer this question. Give a microphone. Suppose that person, you say, oh, the, see, you, the, what makes me is holiness movement. And it is freely available for you. It's not a church. It's the wisdom of God that it is not a church. So that it can, it can educate as many as want to know God truly. Will you want to join holiness movement? Or um, will you want to come to learn from holiness movement? Suppose he says no. What will you say to him? I will not accept it, sir. You have answered your question. You can go back. Praise the Lord. My name is Sister Faith from River State. Daddy, my question goes to you. I read about a, what was his name? Amola on the internet. No, when you talk about Bulut, you put all of us online. So they were like, Daddy said we should not read whatever is in the internet. But I have to read about uh, James Agbola. I did not know anything. So when the beep entered me, I had to read it. And when I read it, I was like, what happened? So between me and myself, I called the sister. I said, what is really happening? She said, have you read Pastor Siri's own? I said, no. So when it entered, I read it. Now, Daddy, is it good for us? Because sometimes you will see something. I know the kind of attack. I know what he really said in the internet because I, I really followed him. Is it good? And some of our members too. Is it good for us to read it? So that sometimes you will read and we're like, hey, if it's not good, then how are we going to do it? Because I saw it. I read it. I read the comments. But there is something a brother said here. I don't know if he's a chapter leader. That thing he said gripped me and kept me strong. He said, I was chastised here in Horimo as a chapter leader. And never a day I despise daddy because I know it is the Lord that is chastising me for me to go to heaven. Now, daddy, I want to know, is it good for us to be reading them or we should just pass them? Who said what you're saying now? I don't know the brother's name, but he's in Abuja here. The when... The when brother, he was giving his comment, he was commenting him, saying he should go back to his daddy. He said, me in Horemo, as a chapter leader, I was chastised. If the Lord would chase me and chastise me and take me to heaven, I don't have a problem with that. So that is Now, my wife didn't come out clearly about James Abola matter. The Lord told my wife that the testimony of James Abola is a lie. He said, Something is there's some, there are some things about Muslim converts lies, deception, love of money. In the revelation, John Sabola said, It is where I eat my food. Just as Margaret's revelation, so is James Sabola on. They frame these things and start moving with them. God is not aware of those things. God is not aware. She, maybe she didn't have time to tell you the details. I, as a person, could not tame James Abola from the beginning of the testimonies. I, the coordinators were just inviting him anywhere. I don't know this man. What is the beginning of the Christianity of this man? It is um, Mike, uh, Olushola. Mike Olushola, his childhood friend that promoted him in Horemo. Before I knew it, my Olushola had already printed a CD in the name of Holiness of Our Movement of James Abola from Jones. I was not aware. And the thing was just circulating like that. Holiness Movement? Who, who, who occasioned this? Eh, James Abola, the, the Lord had, the Lord made with him. I was just watching it. It didn't pass through my test. Okay, maybe it really happened so. Let me watch James Abola come through my supervision. I couldn't get him. Before I knew James Abola, they have called him in the east. They have called, called him in the west. They have called him in the central. He is, I saw James Abola as a Horemo evangelist to my surprise. I'm not aware. How did he get born again? I'm not aware. 
but my people just clear, raise them up. Somebody will come to me. Yes, sir, I'm a financial crusade. Uh, James Abola is the speaker. Ah, ah. All these ones who have taught the word of God, you can't call them. Is somebody I don't know where he belongs. James Abola was not a chapter, was not, a, was not attending unit meeting, was not attending chapter meeting. He didn't belong to Abuja Horemo, didn't belong to Joss Horemo. Where does this man belong? I started fighting my coordinators, just rebuking them. Where are you honoring this man? Is that true? Raise up your hand, coordinators, if this is what was happening. Exactly. It was Mike Olushola that promoted uh, James Abola. It was then when they now told him, Pastor is refusing you because where do you belong? We, he does, you are not among my leaders. You are not coming for any meeting for later. His general conference, he will come. And when John Sabona comes, he will look for a chance to do something in the pulpit. Use microphone. And I know this person is announcing himself. This person wants to show the people that, yes, I am known in the headquarters. You know, people are technical in their ways. So the Lord revealed that I didn't give this man that revelation. That is the revelation. That is the matter. So, he formulated a revelation on another person. I said, see this formulation you have done. If, if, if this is the step the church has taken. If the Lord told you something different, you come and tell me. Where are we in conflict now? That was why I put him on discipline. Wondering and praying, how do I handle this one that the Lord has revealed that he is fake? His, revelations are not, his revelation is not original. And there's some of such revelations. They, uh, Mike Olushola will say, ah, The Lord revealed this to James Abola. I will look through it. No, it's not like that. I said, Mike, come. Um, you are saying the Lord revealed to James Abola. See what he said here, but it didn't come to pass. So, this is the matter. We, were, we didn't explode it, we were waiting for how to do it because we follow it gradual, gradual gradual it's not easy to catch a snake because it will bite you if you're not careful so we were dealing with it gradually until he is no more here by himself i will believe that god removed him but this is the revelation his revelations are not from god is that okay thank you Whatever you're saying there, I'm not hearing you. I'm reading it. <laughs> Microphone. Daddy, I'm asking eh, as it comes now, because I remember there was a message we listened to, the truth of the matter. Here, you play for us, we listen to it, we ask some questions. Now, when it comes to uh, Bulus, we're online, you broke it down to all of us. Now, in this situation, can we be reading them online or we should forget about it? Because the reason why I'm asking this question, please, brother, hold on. The reason why I'm asking this question, if you're on the internet, you will see some people's reaction. That's what I'm asking. So, if we come across it, because there's some people that will comment good, there's some people that will comment bad. So, that's why I'm asking this question, Daddy. Now, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 24. Revelation chapter 2, verse 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Theatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. There are people who are interested to know the depth of evil things. It's not the will of God for you. It will hurt you. It will hurt you. The Lord advise you, go from the presence of a foolish man. When you perceive not in him the lips of knowledge, avoid him. Because those words will sink and eat you up like anchor. 
they will disturb you they will affect you and maybe with process of time they will remove you from the faith therefore we have enough good thing why are you trying to know i'm more reading i'm reading about satan i'm reading about satan i know a lot about satan please know a lot about jesus instead is that clear thank you microphone my name is sister Ibisine. i'm from Balata state there is my question with this before i came this place then i have a job that the man now, promised me before i say the revelation on james abola's testimony came up around me last year yes. the fake that the lord showed that it was fake was at me last year so yes. we were following the matter and it was last year was a terrible year for us in holiness revival movement and thank the lord the lord has settled it yeah go ahead. Mm -hmm. so before i came this place i have the job i am working for hotel so uh, one year plus they go before the man always tell me say let me stop down and he will call me later so after some times my mind going to trouble me so i say god I want to go even though this work what I'll do. I don't know whether it's right, it's not right to. So I came this matter to many people, even my pastor. They are told me that let me not go there. It's not good for Christian to go there. To go okay. to where? Yeah, okay. So it's a this that is giving me to when I store to clean, to sweep the compound and the back and front and go. So when I say some that accept it, some not accept it. Some say let me forget, some say it's not sin. But they are smoking there. When you go, nobody they sweep the house, get them, all these things they come out. So I just confused. So he told me that at the end of this month, he will call me back. So by the case of I come to God, say, as I come to this conference, I will ask, ask this question. Whether is it good for me to continue or is not on me? Then the second one again. Whether it is good to do what? Yeah. yeah. The to second one. in yeah. the hotel. Yeah, I have to take the question. Ask the first one first. You are struggling for the second one. The first question, that is hotel. That what happened about hotel? The second one is a water baptism. Now you are going to I ask, to ask only one question. Yes. Because even the one question you have not yet settled with me, you are jumping to the second one. Okay. What is your first question? Yeah. The first, the first one is, is the hotel work that I give it to me. So let me come and sweep in okay. the compound and the back and the front, the back and front. To sweep the compound, don't consign me anything about table, about anything about that coke, that beer, those things. Let me clean the compound and the backyard and front to go. Now, what do they do in that hotel? Now, it's a hotel, though. Eh? Hotel, hotel. Eh, what do they yeah. do there? I don't know what they do. You don't know what they're doing there? No, no, no. no then no. how do you know it is a hotel? <laughs> 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 so I want thing. to know your understanding. Yes. What do you understand? And I want to know the kind of hotel. Because there are different kinds of hotels. Yes. So which hotel? Which kind of hotel? <laughs> I'm not going to ask that one. I'm not going to that one. Then your question will not be answered. Now yes. go to number one. Okay. Because you're not even clear in your question. Yes. Go to question number two. Yes. Look at them there. I don't have this Ask question, the second question. May I ask that, that the second one again, I want to do the water baptism. In the shores, that time I didn't know any other things. I just joined and go and do the baptism. So before I came over the morning, my man kept asking me, I can have join them for this water baptism for this place. Oh, yes or no? Then the, the third one again. Yes. Wait, wait. When you were baptized for Martin of Fire, were you born again at that time? That time I was, I was, I am, yeah, I have a second marriage. Okay, you were in second uh, marriage. Yes, I am second marriage. So when the thing happened, so I already separate myself in marriage. I already separate myself in marriage before I joined them. So I do the water baptism. 
So you separated yourself from I marriage. I separated from the man. I don't leave the marriage. Why did you separate yourself from marriage? I am second. I am second marriage. I am second pay. Because the first wife is there alive. Uh, okay, because of the word of God. Yes. And it is in that conviction you wanted to serve Jesus that you went to Mountain yes. of Fire. Yes. And they baptized you. Yes. So it's okay. That's all right. Since you have been born again before you were baptized. Okay. Were you not? Yes, sir. Oh, that's all right. You're okay, sir. Mm. Oh, okay, sir. It's mm. okay. okay, sir. Okay, sir. Then, <laughs> I remember last one, though. I asked him, and the pay, because I did consign the marriage and the pay, and the man paid my daddy. So some of them that told me that to reform the money to the man, but some of them that told me, say, let me forget about the matter. So his marriage is wrong, he said, his pay is waste, then he wants to rent the matter. So I just confused that I already got to my family, in the man's family, and returned the money to the man. Before I get some that I don't support, some that I support, and say, if I come back, I see as that one. Is the, the man, did the, the man he ask you to? Dowry. Yes, he paid my dowry. Did he ask you to return the dowry? Yeah. Huh? Yes. The man said you should return the dowry? The man. And the first ones they are alive, but they separate, they don't do, they don't do together. So me, as I know the word of God, as, as I separate, so they tell me that to make I return the money to him. Did the man say he should separate? The man don't say anything that is from a woman that advised me, that gave me the advice that let me return the dowry for Listen. the man. Suppose you were not married to the man. Yes. How long did you stay with him? Mm -hmm. she did. Eh? How long did you? Eh? Yeah. How long did you stay with the man? I stayed with the man. We are already had a marriage in 2015. Now we break. You have children there? I have children with it. How much is the price of those children? Four children. I born One child it. costs how much? Four children. You, what you have given to the man is more than the money he paid for you. Oh. So you don't need to return anything. Is that okay? And yet you are free. Thank you. I have two questions to ask. One is about our women menstruation. Back then in my secondary school, when I went to stay with my grandmother, she said, if you are in your menstruation, don't go to church on Sunday. That is it's forbidden. I said, ah, how won't I go to church? But then she was attending this cherubim and seraphim. And because of that thing, I have to leave her and start going to Anglican church. So now, last year, the church that was attending, the man of God went to he asked me to bring something for him at the altar. He now called me, say, Are you in your flow? And I look at him. I say, No. I say, Why do you ask me, sir? He said, If a woman is uh, seeing her menstruation, she will not climb the altar. I was not saying, ah, What is happening? Then in my secondary school, my grandmother told me this thing. Now in this church, they are telling me, this. What about these women of God that God is using? That they are doing the work of God. If they are in their menstruation, who they climb the pulpit and preach the word of God? Praise the Lord. Then my second question is about the seminar we have today. Doing business without committing sin. What is happening in the business industry? Now, when you buy a market today and you are selling that market, they will not call you and say, ah, they have had money in the business. And as a Christian, is it good for we to add money? in that business again because many christians are doing and i'm confused i want to know more about that now that law of if you are menstruating don't come to the church don't climb the altar is not in the new testament all those things have been abolished by jesus christ they don't they are not effective now it's not practicable now you are menstruating listen some even say if you are menstruated, don't meet with your husband. It's not like that. You are very free at any time as long as it's convenient for the two of you. It's, you're not sinning against God. All those laws have stopped. They are for the Old Testament. They're not in this time. Nobody need, needs to know that you're menstruating even. Is that okay? Yes, Defilement is not of uh, what is happening in your body, but of your lifestyle something that has to do with your heart it is what comes out of your mouth the pollution 
the sin, the lie, the immorality, these are the things that bring defilement and not uh, your administrating. No, that doesn't work now in the church of Christ. Is that okay? Yes, sir. And then your second question is saying, you bought a product as a businesswoman. You bought it 5000 at this time. And you heard that the price has increased in the market. And that now the price is... Uh, now to get that same thing again, you have to go prepare for 7000 And you're doing your business for you to sell and go to buy it again. You have to add something to it. Otherwise, how will you go and replace it and sell it to people? You will now be selling it from 7,000 upwards so that you can have gain to go and buy and still sell to people. You know, your transfer money is also there. If you sell it at 5,000, where will you have transfer money to go back? And if you go, you, can, you cannot buy it again to replace. That would be foolishness. So let's think straight. Thank you, sir. We expect two coordinators, one standing this side and be giving the people. Praise the Lord. Daddy, my question goes this way. If a, a mother gives birth to a child. Look to that side. Look to the mirror. Look to the mirror. To the, yes. If a mother gives birth to a child, a baby, and you wear a trouser, for cold, not for fancy. Is it, is it good? Is it a sin? Because they say you should not wear a trouser. Is it a sin? Does a baby wear trouser? Everybody answer me. No. You just got a baby. You say give birth to a baby and you wear her trouser. Is it possible? There is a unisex that a small child wears whether male or female it is as the person is developing and and now is standing out clearly as a female that you avoid feminine dressing upon that person is that okay yes sir. you avoid feminine dressing but as a small child you must cover that child well oh. is that okay yes daddy thank you Good Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is uh, Sister Mbadu. I'm coming from uh, Benue State. I have two questions, but our, I thank God my colleague have asked the, the first one and it has been answered. So I have, my question is many one now. Praise the Lord. So my question goes like this. I'm a businesswoman. So in the place I, I went for my, this thing, my workshop this evening, our teacher told us that if you are doing business, like storage business, and maybe you buy from a, a bigger bag and you go and turn it into a smaller one, that is a sin. So what I want to ask from this question is this. Assuming you buy from a bigger bag and you turn it into a smaller one and the buyer himself knows very well that it's not the same bag that you bought with that you will still sell with. Is it a sin? Uh, uh, what is in your heart for turning the bigger bag into a smaller bag? What is in your heart? So, no, it's normal because even the buyers, they know that it's not the bag that you buy with that you sell with. They know. And if you turn it in a smaller bag, they used to buy it a different price. From the one that there you not are done. various measures of selling things. As you're turning it into a smaller bar, it, the price also will reduce. If you want to sell in big bar, the price will increase with your gain. And the buyer also is pricing with you what will satisfy him to buy from you, whether it be big bar or small bar. 
So there's nothing evil about it. It depends on how and, how and what type of major you want to sell your product. Uh, you buy in bag and now you're measuring in, in a dish. Is there anything about it? No. Sell your goods according to your conviction, the way you want to do it. There's no corruption there. The corruption is in the pricing. Make sure your pricing does not cheat people. Very often, there is standard price in the market. When granule comes out, there is standard price. In fact, if you go to market, very often there is standard price. You are selling according to the standard price. You are selling according to the standard measure. You get it? Yes. So there is nothing wrong about that. Thank you. Since your buyer is also convinced of what he's buying. Praise the Lord. I'm Rachel from Portacourt. Daddy, I have a question. There is a, a sister in our state. I asked her something about her family, and what she told me broke my heart. She said that her mom is married to her dad, but before her mom was married to her dad, she was married to a man. And a week before the wedding, the man himself did something that she said that if she goes into the marriage, she will not be able to enjoy it. So she said that for that reason, the church wedding will not hold. So she left the man and now got married to the girl's father now. And they have given birth to six children. Only for her to discover last year that the mother was counseled that the man that she is married to now, presently that paid her diary, is not her husband. That is that first man. And I told her, no, by what I have learned for the years I've been in Holy Mo, Daddy said that it is only when you people have slept together that you cannot break it. But if people have not slept and you notice something on time, you can dissolve the marriage. And she said that the mother went home last year to go and return the bride price that that other man paid on her head. And now the husband that is with her, that gave birth with, with her for six, with the six children, the man, she told the man to leave the house. And the man is saying that he's going to remarry. So I said, no. And the woman is in her remorse. The man also is in her remorse. I said, that kind of counsel, I've never heard it since I've been listening to messages. So that in that case, what counsel can we give to her? I'm just appreciating you because that is the correct knowledge. You told the woman the correct thing. Because they had not yet entered into the marriage with the first man. They had not entered into the marriage. Although the man paid her dowry, there was no yet leaving and cleaving. She still remained under the authority of her father. The week that she would have, her authority would have been transferred to the man, the wedding didn't hold. So which means the marriage didn't hold. Because the girl is afraid of telling them. When we told her about it during our state meeting, we told her that we are going to, since they say you're coming, we, my husband and I said, we are going to wait for you so that we'll ask this question so that some wrong, wrong counsel will not be given to people. And the girl is, they said that the, whole, the children are feeling it, that they don't like it. And they are, I told her, now, tell your mom. Is, which state is that? River State, sir. Go and tell your River State coordinator. Yes, sir. He will handle the matter and trace the woman. Okay, sir. And the matter will be settled. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I have three I questions. The first one is about my marriage. I want to ask Daddy because uh, when 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 I leave the I leave Muslim background, I now marry a Christian. But I don't. I I ask this question somewhere. The answer they gave me, I'm not really sure about it. I say if I come here, I will ask about it. They say that they uh, that are supposed to carry my husband to my father because my case is that my father now they don't know where I am for nine years they don't know where I am I, I, I didn't see them I didn't go to my place and up to now they are still looking for me because of the two children that I'm with them now so that is the reason why we didn't go to my father and the people that brought me out, they are the ones that represent my family. So some say that it's wrong, that we should 
that, that I should carry my husband to my father. I say he has already heard about it. But for me to carry my husband there now is risk. So I don't know whether it's wrong. Uh, which tribe are you? What tribe are I'm you? I'm from Taraba State. From Taraba State. Which part of it? By Issa, Kurumi local government. It's okay. And your father is a Muslim. Muslims in that area are not serious ones. Why are you so afraid of your father? They born, they born our grand-grandfather. We, we didn't enter the, this thing. They born our grand-grandfather inside the religion. So that doesn't mean up, anything. But I don't know. Changes have come there now. Hmm. So as you go, meet with your coordinator, your state coordinator. He is going to also arrange with the uh, coordinator of... Um, the chapter leader of Kurumi, and they will use the wisdom to make you see your father. It shall work. You were just fearing. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Did she perish? Exactly. So it's on, on, unnecessary fear Satan has given to you. Is that clear? Go. The Lord will help you. Amen. The second answer... The, the second but this, question, this answer I have given to her, your case may be different. We will treat your case according to its merit. So we will need to hear about your case. You don't take her own case as a standard. I know why I answered her this way. Because I know she doesn't have problem. It's unnecessary fear. But in case your case is a serious one, you will also need counsel. So we can know how God will direct in your matter. Thank you, sir. The second one. Those two children that I, I am here with them, when I bring them, I want to, uh, when I put them to school, I didn't change their name, the Muslim name. So they How used... did you get those children? Sir? The two children, how did you get them? I married in, in Muslim. I, I am the uh, third wife. wife. In yes. The Islamic yes. So I escaped with two children. So as I bring them here, I have to put them to school, and I didn't change the name and, the, and my uh, former husband's name. This is the name that they are using in the school. So one day they called me in the school that this name is bringing confusion. In time of uh, Muslim, this, this, this thing, they will be dragging with the Christian. They will say that this is their children. The, Christian, the, the, uh, the teachers of uh, that side, they will say, no, their parents are Christian. So they now call me and I say, so I want to change in the, then one woman said that I have to change their name. I now change the name. I put the other one favor, the other one grace. I have to change the name of the father too. They are using the name of my husband now. And, men, and some people say that it's wrong, that it's a sin for me to change the father's name. I don't know whether it is wrong or it's I mean, you can bear three names. You, you can even bear four. Go to Yoruba land. They will tell you how many names a child bears. <laughs> Combine every name and then choose just two to make, pro, to make prominent and leave others in initial. Is that clear? Grace Abubakar Johnson. You get how it, it makes up? Grace Abubakar Johnson. Now, Grace A. Johnson, finish. As to what A stands for, nobody knows. <laughs> so it's okay. Praise the Lord. The last one is that, please, I want to, because this is, this is the question that I want to be sure of. Please, bear with me. The last question is that, about restitution, and about uh, this... Uh, uh, debt. When I was in that site, I used to do business of uh, giving money with interest, buying things and sell. I used to go to Kanu and buy some wrappers. This is my business. But I collected the money from somebody in that time. One, 160000 He now gave me that if I do the business, I get my own, then I will give him his, his money. So at the process of the business now, the Lord arrested me 2013. Even all the uh, money, all the people that I give them money, 
to um, I give them money, they, they return it to me. So all this thing cooked there. No way for me to go and gather the money. And the person is still calling me that I should return the money. And now I don't have the money to give. I am trying my best to pay it all because I used to hear daddy preach about if you are owing somebody, you should try and, and, and pay because this thing alone will hinder you. I'm trying my best and pray and say, God, open door for me to pay. And the money didn't come. Now, what will, you, what will I do? Tell the man so. Call the man. Send him text. Call him. Explain everything. The difficulty you face and the struggle you're still making now and appease him. Tell him to be patient. You are still having in mind that when the Lord gives you money, you will pay him. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Although you have not settled the man's money, you have made peace with him. And making peace is what God desires of you. Sir, I did too. I did mm -hmm. what you are saying. Yes. But the man said that he will not. I explained everything. I explained to him my situation now. Yes. I say, is it not? Is it's not that I have the money. I don't want to pay you. Yes. This is my situation. He now said no. That I must pay the money. Uh -huh. is is the same, are you saying that you will not pay? I say I will pay. Uh huh. And uh, he said I you said should if, pay. Yes. Both of you are saying pay, pay. Mm. You're only waiting for the money, so you will pay. This making my second time attending the program here. There is a sister which told me about this uh, Orimon. I am from Ozoro in Delta State. There is a cassette that he, he, she gave to me, and that cassette talks about my tithe. The grant that you pay your tithe to, the message was preached by our daddy here. So right from last year, I have been paying my tithe to Ori Mon because they display the account number and I copy them. So, but I am a member of Redeem. This morning, as our mommy Linda came to this place and he displayed all those things, I have been hearing ever since I bet it was as if let the ground open for me. And I decided in my heart that I will not leave this Orimo. But there is something that doesn't make mention of that Orimo is not a church. Where do I go now? Because go to Orimo. <laughs> my second my second question is that there is an inter I saw uh, somebody in the internet and she was preaching, saying it with emphatically that this ejection that they are giving, don't take it. Africa, don't take it. Nigeria, don't take it. Ghana, don't take it. She was mentioning the name in Africa. So, in my place, I went to visit somebody in the hospital. They just drove in and told the doctor that ready on Monday, we are coming to give the vaccine. In fact, I was, my heart had to jump into my mouth. I was thinking that before this thing, we got to our village, maybe three, five years might have gone. But look at the gestion, look at us. So daddy, when you look to the book of Revelation chapter 13, it says it's a mark, it's a number of man. And not one, not two, three. And the number of sisters is, is three. So what do you advise? Because it's raining. In, in any moment from now, I think we will be flushed out of our work. Because they are saying that, saying that without taking it, we will not be able to do the government work. Thank you, sir. The vaccine is not 666. Everybody say, COVID-19 vaccine is not 666. 
Say it again. Carry your last speaker to your mouth and repeat after me. COVID-19 is not 666. COVID-19 is not 666. Simple. It is not. Before 666 comes, the church is not in the world. 666 will come during Antichrist oppression. In fact, it's not even going to come in the first three and a half years of Antichrist. It's going to come after the three and a half years of the Antichrist. That 666 will be revealed to the world. The time 666 will be revealed and instituted in the world, we will be coming back with Christ after three and a half years. We will be coming back. We would have been in heaven already for three and a half years before 666 will go into the world. The Antichrist will come in for seven years. But the first three and a half years, he will be conquering he will be politicizing the world to, be, to become king, ruler, the god of the world. It will take him time. It will take three and a half years. It is part of the tribulation. The last three and a half years is then he will be releasing that authority because he has declared himself God. It's not immediately. That time we're already with Jesus in receiving our reward. So COVID-19 is not 666. Praise the Lord. And number two, once you receive that number 666, everything about the fear of God will change in your being. Your mind will become hardened because you are completely satanic. You have signed contract with Satan. Some of our brethren that are here have taken the vaccine and yet they are normal. See them in the conference. Let me see you stand up. You have taken vaccine. Stand up. Let your brethren see you. Even among the choir. See them now. They have taken vaccine. Everybody clap your hand. They have taken vaccine and they are still serving God. They are, they are rejoicing. They are worshipping God. The spirit of God is still in their lives. But whoever takes 666, the Holy Spirit shall not be in their lives. And they are doomed for hell. And they have taken COVID-19 uh, COVID vaccine. But they're still alive. They're still praising Jesus. It is not 666. Six, six. Everybody say, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. My number three question is about my, my, one of my son. or my children, I can say. He's in, uh, into, he's in Ghana. And uh, he's into Yahoo. So I have, I have complained, I have begged, sent even mommy, Linda messages, messages to him to repent. But at the end, he told me that he's the into foreign, foreign exchange. So, but I am not still convinced. Even when I am in the camp, he told me, mommy, send your account number to me. But fear, not let me send my account number. So I really want you to put a uh, to light. Continue to be cautious and to pray to God about it until God assures you. If it does not assure you, don't send your account to him. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Because it may not really be forex. Continue to pray. Praise the Lord. My question goes like this. During the teaching or Take the, it closer to your mouth. During the teaching in the workshop, our teacher made us to know the teaching is how to raise money. To, to, how to raise money to do your own business. So he taught us how we raise money in some areas. But he mentioned the other areas that we can raise money by contributing. Sometimes they do it like, I don't know how to put it in our language. We, we contribute in maybe as five, 5,000 or 2,000 like that. Um, any amount you have, we'll be giving one after uh, another. And my question there is that I am confused because as a child of God, maybe the area you are doing your business, uh, children of God there are not many. 
And as a child of God, can you join hands together with your neighbors, unbeliever, to contribute money to do your own business? Is it good or not? I want to know about it. Well, there is this practice that is done in the market that somebody will be going around and be collecting money to keep for you. Whether it's an unbeliever or a believer, it's a business. He's collecting the money to keep for you. You are not actually with any people. You are just with him. And it is a business. He's registered for it. And at the end, whichever period you need your money, you see him, he gives the money to you, and then you pay him. Is that so? Yes. That's another way. And if you know such a person is trusted, you can, uh, you can employ that. Mm, the reason why I ask is, some believers around us, some that although they were not from the same religion uh, uh, church, they are contributing. Sometimes I used to tell them that this thing is bad. And as they mentioned it today, even some of our members uh, there, we are here together. Then we want to clarify about it. And um, some will be giving like that, where you contribute with your neighbor, 5,000, 5, and the way you are doing your business is different from the way she is doing her own. That is why I want to clarify. They call it, in, in that language, they call it Sadashi, which is. I don't know how. Okay. The other one is selling alcohol. Yes, sir. That other one is uh, selling. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good conviction not to do it with them. Okay, sir. You can be selective. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Yeah, be selective. So my, my second question is about the adornment. Although God has been helping me, but. The, what, the, what, the area I, I am confused, it is when I came to this program. They told us how to weave our hair and to plait our hair. I know that I am not using other attachment, other things, and the real thread, that real, uh, the slim fan thread, we are not, we didn't see it in our side. We are using this sewing machine thread, that small, tiny one. When, when I use it and plait my hair, I come here, we are discussing, I was discussing with one of the sisters in the hostel. Then she was telling me that this thing is not good for a child of God to use. Then I was confused. But I say we have been, even when I came to program last, about a few years ago, I showed it to our teacher that was teaching us that time. They said that one is not bad. And I come to know today, this time, that it's bad. I don't know the one we are going to follow. I am confused, sir. Now, what we are avoiding is fashion. There is a principle we are following. Not that this is bad for being bad. This one is, no, it's a principle. When you plait your hair with the, uh, um, the tailoring thread, what do you call it? Sewing thread. That's sewing thread. Yes, sir. Does it That's make your appearance ungodly? No. Then what is wrong with it? Okay, sir. Nothing is wrong with it. Okay, sir. So thank yeah. you. Praise the, the Lord. Climb up, climb up again to the last. Praise the Lord. Daddy, thank you for the opportunity given to me to stand to ask this question. I've been having a great burden in my heart toward this thing. And I've been thinking on how to meet you and uh, bring this, uh, seek for counseling and ask this question. My question goes this way. When I was much younger, in the but vineyard of God... we must be careful that we don't go and use red tailor, tailor, uh, red color, green color, uh, what other color? No. It is the normal color, that's the black color, which goes with your hair. Otherwise, this, if these women will go to bring various colors here again. Is that clear? Maintain the black color. Thank you, my sister. So, as I was saying, when I was much, much younger, I was in the church. I went to the church compound towards evening. Then I had a voice that spoke to me that my time in this church is over. I should go over to the same church in the, another state to go and assist the pastor there in the establishment of the church. But actually, I did not go. 
Because that same day when I left the church, my friend came and told me that we should come to Abuja. There is a job there for me. So I left. But ever since then, whatever I do did not really work out. To the extent that there was a time my husband collected loan for me. That he wants me to do business. So I go to God in prayer. I've been praying, asking God, what type of business should I do? I prayed and prayed and prayed. I did not have any answer. Then my husband collected the loan and gave me that I should go and cook food. I said, I know myself. Which time will I cook food? And you uh, must be fast to go straight to the question. Okay, praise the Lord. So at the end of it, when I prayed, I was having some revelation. In a particular night, I will have like three, four revelations. I will see the pastor coming to tell me, this is what I want you to do for me in the world. Bring down the curtain arrange it and hang it back it will take me to the another one it will take me to a uh, geo office of the church and show me the broken foundation of the church that my work for him in this world is to repair the foundation of the church so i will be telling him sir this is not what i want i need a type of business that will give me money i don't want to work this type of work in the church i want the type of business that will give me money but he will left me he will not talk this thing occurred three different, two different times, and uh, so on and so forth. Sometimes, okay, I now enter into the business. I just force myself. I enter one business like that. I say, okay, God, I will give you one. Uh, I will use uh, the rest of the day to work. Then on Friday, I will go and do my business. With this money, my husband gave me because I also seek counseling from other people. They said, "Oh, it's not the will of God, my prayer partner, that I should do the business." You have overstayed in asking your question. You have overstayed. See the crowd of people. Okay. So my question, sir, is: Since then, whatever I do as business does not uh, prosper. Is it because of that voice that told me go to that uh, state? and uh, assist in the establishment of that church is that i did not go is it what is happening should i now go there is the voice does the voice recognize that you are a married woman then i was not married oh then you were not married yes sir so but now you are married yes sir are you asking whether you will do restitution now no, to go back to go to that state no, now according to the voice so i don't understand no. It is not so. Let's look for, let's try to check other areas that would have been responsible for your situation. Mm. Go back again to God and cry unto him. Repent of every other sin or anything you have done, contrary, and wait again for God to give you an answer. Mm. Where are you from? I prayed, I entered fasting, Where I prayed. Where are you from? Okay, I'm from... Uh, Zone. Then find your chance to see me for counseling. Okay, sir. Thank yes. you. Number five. Praise the Lord. My name is no Sister worry. Peace so from Kuba Zone. Daddy, my question is, um, if you have a husband, and just is similar to a question that has been asked, but there's a little difference, I want to be clarified. And you know, your husband is into gambling, any kind of gambling. And he, you know that he used to get money from there and win some money, maybe Niger belt and all these things. Is it right as a woman that when he brings the money home, as a Christian woman, you, yeah, he gives you the money maybe for house, expenditure, all this and all that, you collect and you spend together. Meanwhile, you are telling him that this is not good. This is ungodly. Is it right? That if it's not right, what can you do? And similarly, if the man too is doing ungodly business, let me say like selling beer parlor, uh, having a film hall show, maybe they are watching football, all these things, 
and you are telling him this thing is not good though. you have to look for out for another business and anytime he will always tell you that if they bring the money you eat it and it's your husband and you have children what can you do uh, what do you say is the main business of your husband what does he do that film show film show yes yeah, like football show all this is okay it's showing football to yes. people yes they come and watch yes they come and when watch. they come and watch what sin do they go and commit hmm? no the the issue people there bait. is that what does that bait gambling gambling okay they do gambling in the the, the first one is gambling and the second one is still that uh, film, uh, football show. They can come there, they can smoke there, they can do anything there in that hall. Do you understand? And even at uh, the period of prayer or anything, because my husband goes to church. You understand? You see that many people, instead of going to church, they will be there. Uh, let's uh, go to the book of First Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians chapter five, I read verse nine. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. For then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one, no, not to eat. The, the, the Bible here differentiates two sinners. One, normal sinner in the world. Two, a man who says, I am a Christian, and plays church, Place Christianity, but is a sinner. As for the normal sinners in the world, he said, I'm not asking you that you should have, you should uh, stay away from them. No. It is those who pretend. Your husband is a normal sinner in the world. Normal sinner. Which, which husband does not commit sin among the normal sinners that are in the world? Is there anyone? Even the one that sit as directors, do you know what their virus, their pen does in the office to bring money in? So, we will not be telling you this about them. That, okay, if your husband brings money to fit his own family, you should not take. He is responsible for what he does. But the children are his. You must eat food and take care of your children. And the Bible tells us, if your husband is an unbeliever, and once and is satisfied that you should be there you should be there in the marriage should you leave him no to be an unbelieving husband what job does he do what job any kind of job that he can do he still wants you to be there and he brings money to the house you may not ask question whatever is sold in the market eat without asking questions if you ask that man is this betting your only source of money he will tell you no he gets money from different sources is that okay he gets money from different sources don't be asking him then this money you're giving me is from where don't bother yourself on that your husband is an unbeliever but where God particularly tells you then ask God what to do. He will tell you what to do in specific cases, but not in general cases. Otherwise, marriages will scatter and it will not be the will of God. Is that all? Thank you. Praise the Lord. The second question I want to ask is when, uh, you know, there are 
they are teaching us to forgive. And even in your marriage, that there is no offense that can lead to divorce. You have to stay. But now, I want to ask, if you have a husband, and that husband cheats, and you know that that husband is unfaithful, do you understand? And at the process, he contacts a disease. And this disease, you know that this disease is deadly. Do you understand? Is it right? Is it right for, for you, as, is it wise, as a woman, so that the marriage will not separate? You start sleeping with your husband with that disease. Or if you are not to do that, you know you are living together, but you are somehow separated. What are you going to do? You are living together, you are separated. What does but that you are hus somehow separated. Now, you can't sleep with your husband on the same bed. You can't mate with your husband because you know he has a disease and he's untreated. So what are you going to do? Have you told him the situation? Sir? Have you told him that he has a disease? Have you gone to the hospital and brought the result to him and said, See, this is what you have? No, this, this question I'm asking is not for me particularly. Oh, you, you have finished your own question. Mm -hmm. So let's, let the person who has that problem come. Let me know what he has to say. Praise the Lord. Climb up, climb up. Praise the Lord. My name is Sister Glory Ude. I came from Adia State. So my question is about, so my question is about uh, plating of hair. It's just a similar question that the other sister asked. So I normally use this thread. The, the tailors normally use it to design clothes. And it's more economic. You can wash it. You can use it for a long time. For, even for years, it will not fade. And it's, uh, it can, it's wash, you can wash it. So it's more economic. So I normally use it to do my hair. And some sisters say it's not good. That is why I even brought the sample. They normally use it to design uh, to design clothes. So I said since they normally use it to design clothes, so I normally use it to do my hair. So that is why I, I, I Please, uh, the state women coordinators, let these women clarify from you. If you are not clear with the state coordinator, bring it up to us. So I brought it you can even snap it and send it to us. So that we won't be having to deal with one, 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 one person. Because I am standing here now. I have not used what you held. You are holding your hand now before. So I cannot tell clearly what it is. It's so a, I will want a woman to see it of you and give report what she has seen. So let your woman leader see it and let us know whether it is acceptable or not. We just give you the principle. It should not be for fashion. It should not make you appear worldly. That is the principle. But as to the specifics, I don't know until I see. I am Esther Yunana from Plateau State. I have uh, some, uh, something that is worrying me. I have some voices. I don't know the voices. Sometimes some come to pass, some, some not come to pass. I don't know how to differentiate the voice of Jesus and the voice of Satan. So I, because I don't know how to do that. I don't know. Uh, whenever you hear a voice, go to your leader and say, I had a voice like this. Who do you think is speaking? He, the Lord will give him grace. Since he knows God more than you, he will direct you. When Samuel had a voice calling him, he went to Eli until he became clear through Eli's directive that it was God speaking. So go to your leader and explain what happens to you. You will be directed. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Daddy, I want to ask. A, a, sister, a sister said that 
she is married. Now, being married, just like the similar question that the other sister came and asked, the husband plays uh, Beth Niger and the rest. So she is a business person. Even if she keeps the money that she carries from the market and bring, the man will still carry the money. Sometimes he will, he will steal the money out of her pocket and go and play this same uh, bed Niger. Sometimes she, he just lured her and collected huge amount of money, pretending that somebody collected the money to do an uh, election, that at the end of it, he's going to pay him back. Uh, pay, pay him back. But he took that money for gambling, about one point something. And so the sister kept uh, uh, the money out of him. He said, we will not give him, give him any money again. So what I want to uh, is I should ask, whether since the man is unfaithful in the money and is unfaithful to keep the, the money he's giving to him, is it still right that you should still give this money since they say you should submit as a wife to the man? Is it still right to submit to such uh, my husband who is carrying huge amount of money like that for gambling? That's my number one question, sir. Well, this question does not concern you. Okay. Somebody else sent you. Yes, sir. Uh, it's just like somebody sent you to see the doctor and tell the doctor that she is feeling the stomach pain this way and it hooks her at the back. And there are questions the doctor would have asked her. But since she's not the one, she's being represented, the doctor is confused what type of prescription to give to you to go and give her. Because I don't want her to, to prepare something like that enough for me to sign. Don't give your money to your husband again. Then she will say, it's pastor who said it. I would have asked her more questions. How did this, what happened? How is your husband? How is this? But you cannot answer for her. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So tell her to read the books and let the books answer her because I need to know detail so that I don't miss answer and she uses it. She's not here hearing me directly. Thank you. The second question is, a, a lot of messages have taught us about uh, uh, dressing and uh, women or maybe a, a sister who has been in the church for long, maybe to correct the new ones that are coming and to give them caution on godly dressing. Maybe you don't, you don't uh, uh, correct that person in anger or being harsh with the person. Even day before yesterday, so I heard you talking about correcting the new ones that are coming. And so please, I want to ask, this correction that is being given to people, do we have specific people that are to do this correction? We don't have. Thank you, sir. Because any person who is zealous for her God, and correct the next person. Thank you, sir. We don't have specific people to do evangelism. Evangelism is for all. Okay, the perfecting sir. work is for all. But do it in love, in wisdom, and don't cause trouble with it. Okay, there are some people that whichever way you do, they'll be angry. Don't mind their anger. Okay, sir. Is that okay? Okay, sir. If also you have been correcting a particular, a particular person in the church and is not hearing you, report it to authority okay, so sir. we can take note and apply our wisdom and authority to see how to correct it thank you thank you sir my name is happy mahwell from nyanya chapter my question goes like this it's about uh, the workshop we had earlier they say take that it nearer your mouth okay that we should be faithful to our partners. So what in a situation if you have a husband that drinks, smooths, he doesn't feed the family, he doesn't give anything to the family. I'm doing business. When I bring the money, you should I go and give it to him? Of course, I know that when I give it to him, he's not going to feed the family. He will use less the money. In that situation, what do I do? And in um, biblical statistics, it says that one plus one is equals to one. I'm not supposed to hide anything away from him. The second question is about uh, this perfume and roll on. What if a person has a body odor? You know, it's very bad. So what do I do since it is a sin? 
And the third question is about dreading of hair. Um, I don't know whether it's a sin or not because you said, the Bible said that we should not apply anything artificial on our hair. And the dreading, I'm using my natural hair, not artificial. And I'm not doing it for fashion. So I don't know how is it a sin. I don't know. What is your third question like? I didn't understand it. Which one, sir? The third question. Dread, dread, dada. Locks, locks. Lo logging off here. Dread locks. Eh? Dread locks. Dread locks. Eh, it's one one. They used to do it one one. You can do so many years with it they without losing it. Okay, the one that looks very dirty. You know, when you do something, it just looks very dirty like that. Is that that right? It is bad. It makes you look dirty like a mad person. It is the Bob Marley business. Sir, yes. um, is it only the dirty? Because what if I'm washing it in the salon? Or maybe it I'm looks dirty in our side. So avoid it. Okay. Thank you, sir. What about the roll-on? Uh, you say your husband uselesses the money. How does he useless the money? I'm not talking about my husband. I'm talking about my friend case. Your friend. So he does not give her anything to feed the family. She's the one Leave that is your friend case. I want somebody who has a real case so I can examine the person. Okay, okay, okay. Otherwise, sir. your friend may not even be born again and may not have the grace of God in her life. So I don't want to give her a formula that she will fumble by it. I want somebody who, who is the real person so I can examine that person before I answer. Now, what's your, your number second question? It's about perfume. Any person? Okay, okay, you have bad body odor. Have you been to the hospital for it? Go to the hospital. It's a sickness. They can treat it. So that you don't carry smell that will be disturbing people. Don't allow Satan give you reason to make you join the team of worldly people. Look for other solutions. It's sickness. You can overcome it. And this morning, this morning, was it this morning? No, yesterday we had an, we had a message on the importance of information. Is that clear? Now, such a person like this. Who has body odor? I don't know whether it's herself or somebody. Who has a bad smell? There's solution to it. Is there a solution to it? After you see, go for this solution. Instead of buying smells and be following you and flies, satanic flies are also following. There are better ways to get the matter settled. So, somebody, what is one of the solutions of bad body odor? Run here and collect microphone. You know the a solution of bad body odor. Come and collect microphone and tell others. Is somebody coming? Uh huh. Please give a microphone. Give it there. Give it there. Yeah. Praise the Lord. If you have a body odor, your duty is to take bath at least morning, afternoon, evening, and wash yourself well. Or you visit the doctor and give your complaint to the doctor. You don't need to use perfume or roll-on. Because just like a daddy has taught us, he said pineapple has their odor, and even a goat and other animals, they have their odor. So as human beings, you equally have the odor that God is identifying you with it. So you wash yourself very well. And if you meet the doctor and the doctor gave the report and the, the, the treatment is not being done, you take it like that and take it to God in prayers. Praise and the Lord. There is another higher information. Yes, give it to her. Give it to her. Give, take, it, take your microphone here. Uh -huh. Praise God. Hallelujah. There is one of my husband, husband cousin that is living with me and she has this strong one that once she comes inside, you will know everywhere will be oozing. 
So I discovered in the internet that lime and lemon, even soda, used to kill it. So when she comes back from school, we divide lime or lemon. Just squeeze that small water from it. Rub, she will rub it anytime she wants to take bed. Naturally, she didn't even do it up to two weeks. I, didn't, I, I, don't, I can't tell how long she did it, but it's not long. One day she came back from school. I was in the sink washing. She came to me. I didn't even know that it's her. Because, because of that order, you notice that she's back. So it was very strong, and that thing killed it naturally. Anytime you perceive that, you use lime or lemon before you bathe, rub it in your armpit, go and leave it like 10 minutes or 15 minutes, then bathe. It kills it naturally. And I realized that that thing is a kind of a living bacteria or something like that. So that thing kills it and kills it completely. We Hallelujah. thank you so much. We thank you so much. Does anybody Amen. want to add? Praise the Lord. Yes. Uh, yes. Another thing is, most of the things that cause this body odor is bacteria inside the body, not only outside. Okay. So you kill it from the inside first. Okay. Then another thing, that body odor and mouth odor is almost equivalent to each other. Some people will wash their mouth after brushing their mouth, their mouth is still stinking. Mm -hmm. Some people will bath after bath and make like this, their mouth, they cannot stay where they are. Mm -hmm. So what you do now, use lime, garlic, and uh, even if you don't get any other, this in line and garlic, paste the water. A shot in the morning, drink it. A shot in the evening, drink it for three days. It will kill it right inside and the body, mouth, or another the, clap of fame. Another clap of fame. Thank you. Yes, continue. Have you finished? Then, then another one of that of the body. When your body, not only body, anything that is secret in your body, you know what I mean. Use the lime or the sacred parts, both armpits. Before one week, everything will be over. Praise the Lord. Can you see the value of information? The importance of information. Please, like this information, we need to gather them in a book. The book will be titled The Value of Information. <laughs> yes, we have about uh, maybe 20 minutes more. Yes. My, my name is Grace from Kogi State. My question is, on 6th of this month, I went to the court to, to collect my age declaration. So I met a staff and he told me that they caught it on strike, that he was just doing something that I came and met him. And I said, when he gave me the form, One. and some other students also joined me, and he gave us. So he used the date of because he said the strike, the court is on strike on that cyst in the morning. So he cannot use the date of that cyst to declare the day that we were given the aid declaration. He now used the date of on 1st of April. So when he told us like that and he, write it, and he wrote it in the, in the form, I was like, this thing, is it I'm carrying a false file? Because the date is showing on 1st. And the day they declare us was on cyst. Uh, how, when were you born? Not my date, date of birth. The date, the date of the declaration. Does, how, which way does it affect righteousness? I don't know. But it's inside the form. It's together with the form. It's part of what you feel. You declared in an early date on the 1st. But the form carried six. Is that it was on the sixth. That you did the declaration. They, 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 they said first because the court went on strike that day. Okay. So he said they cannot use the date of that sixth. He now used first. Serving as a date, I was declared of my age. The date is not affecting my age. Okay, the date does not do that. There's no problem about that. That's wisdom. Okay. Because since they saw the difficulty it is not possible the court was not sitting so it does not affect the main thing which is your age there's no trouble about it thank you sir praise the lord my name is sister victoria daniel from mina chapter praise the lord thank i have you. two questions to ask 
Number one is about uh, wearing of tights. Yesterday, message is telling us about uh, pastor is saying that tight is not a sin. If a woman wear a tight and wear clothes, so I want to ask: there is another tight that goes down well, that need, reaches the ankle, and they will wear gown and cover it. Is it advisable that a Christian woman will wear that one also? That is the first question. Amen. She is talking about types of types. One is short, one is long. The long one, people see, people can see it. Is that? Yes. Don't wear anything that people will see it and abuse you. Don't do it. Yes, sir. Everything you are wearing should not be attracted. Should not attract people out to see it in your life. It will, it will be questionable. Yes, sir. Is that Kiliam. okay? Thank the second you. question is about tight payments. Now, before I go further, I want you to know that God approves these things we are telling you. Because there are some of you that are argumentative by demonic spirit. Some people somewhere who don't know the details about God will be troubling you. I, I dreamed, I dreamed that I, I, I wore tight, so I didn't go to heaven. It's a lie. There are many sins in their lives. So don't allow them to use this thing to affect what we are teaching you here. Don't allow people to use their dreams, which the devil gives them to confuse the work of righteousness we're doing here. We have said, by the grace of God, wearing tight, inside as as your pant that's as your underwear has not uh, it's not a sin because we don't see it people nobody stumbles by it then what makes it a sin what if you were not wearing anything at all inside and yet you dress yourself so well that nobody sees stumbles by you so let's go on principles of righteousness don't take matter too far to to confuse the children of God by your dreams. So don't be threatened by the dream of another person. Follow what we are teaching you. That your tight inside has, not, it has no effect on anybody because nobody sees it. And in short, nobody should see it. Not even in your house. Among, let not your children see it. Otherwise they will learn from you. Is that okay? I am clear. Praise the Lord. Strictly underwear for you. Go ahead. The second question is about tight payment. Maybe I'm doing, I'm, doing, I'm a business woman and I'm, I'm gathering my tight. Maybe I used to pay monthly or I'm working. I, I normally gather it in a month. I will go and pay, and pay my tight. Then somebody is in need. Did I have authority not to come and present it? When they mention about that, did I have authority to, go, to begin to use that money to help? Since it is my tight, I have authority to use it and help, and help somebody. You that don't have it because the Bible says, bring your tithes to where? To the storehouse. That there may be meat, food, money, sufficiency where? In my house. And do you have right to use tithes? It is the priest of God that has right to the tithes, to the use of tithes, not you. Yes. But some, the other money that remains in your hand, you can yes. do as you feel led to do. Yes, I'm clear. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Before uh, I want to ask this question concerning eating. Uh, any deadly thing that is anything that is dead that you died, eat it that is dead yes that sir. dies by itself yes sir um in where i'm coming from and in my orthodox church that i was attending we believed and agree that it is written in the bible in the old testament you should not eat that which dies you have to kill it and for blood to come out 
But when I came to Horemon newly, I was there in the Bible study when a sister asked a question that she had a cassette from our daddy that we can eat whatever. If only it will not uh, poison uh, the person. So my coordinator answered the question very well. But I've been looking for that cassette to hear. I mean, to listen to it very well so that I can get it digested. So I can even explain to somebody. Since I'm not, a, I don't know much about that. I've not uh, laid hand on it. So this opportunity that has come, I said, let me ask this question. If you are rearing chicken, either agri chicken and they get sick and they are dying, you enter and just see one death suddenly. Will you kill it and, and mean, will you just dress it and eat it or will you throw it away? The law that says you should not eat anything that dies by itself is an Old Testament law. And even in the Old Testament, the strangers that were among them were allowed to eat anything that dies by itself. The Israelites were forbidden. Is that clear? Yes, sir. That was an Old Testament law, which is called, which is under ceremonial law. And those things have been abolished in Christ. Now, righteousness is, cannot be gained by keeping those commandments. It is by faith in the Lord Jesus. If you check it, what the apostles are saying, don't fry blood and be eating as idol worshippers are doing don't do that but as for eating something that dies by itself you are very free to eat it full and people are carrying cows to the to the to the west to the east and there's motor accident some cows fell down and died you won't eat it you're free those who want to eat it are free to eat they are not committing sin it is not that which goes into the stomach that defile a man but that which comes out of the mouth of a man. So, it has no implication. If your chicken dies, you feel to eat it, you are free. But if you refuse to eat it, don't think I say you are practicing righteousness. It is not righteousness. Is that clear? Because yes, it sir. is not forbidden now. Mm -hmm. Is there any verse in the New Testament where we can back it up so that when one is given that explanation it is part of the law of the old testament okay. and in the book of romans let's open to romans chapter 9 or chapter 10. romans chapter 10 i read from verse 3 and 4 to from verse i read verse 3 and 4 for they being ignorant of god's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Can we read verse 4 together? One, two, go. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. All Thank those you, things are in the ceremonial law. And as long as you have come to Christ, those ceremonial laws are abolished. Is that okay? Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. My name is Faith. I come from Delta State, Isoko South, Holy. Sir, I want to ask this question because he has been bothering me. I, I marry a man. I be a top wife. And I give birth to the children, to the man. And after I hear my mommy and the Lord, mommy Linda, said, yes, uh, married to a third wife is a sin. You have to do restitution. Then I said, God, help me to do this restitution. And 2015, I do the restitution. And this man, he was, he's, 
He gave the children money every market day. And among uh, that money, I ate inside. And I don't want to go to hell. That is why I said I want to ask this question. Daddy, can I continue to eat this money that the man is giving to the children? I am afraid, sir. Okay, the father of the children. Yes, sir. Is, although you have separated from him. Yes, sir. He is still giving your children money. Yes, sir. Do you have enough money to take care of those children? Sir. Do you have enough money to take care of those children so that he can remove his hand? No, sir. I answer let No! Know. <laughs> Did the, do the children belong to him? I'm asking you. Do the children belong to the man? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If they, when they grow up, do you think they will go back to the man, to their father? There we go. And the man now is taking care of his children. You say he should not do it. And so I want to let me say I'm not clear. about myself. Can I eat the money? Oh, can you eat, eat the, the money? money? Yes, sir. Oh, I understand. <laughs> it's like you give food to a woman to give the child. The, ch the mother is asking, can I also take something to my mom? <laughs> Let the woman answer that question. <laughs> you will eat out of it. Thank you. Hallelujah. My question goes like this. We were taught yesterday about marriage and submissive to husbands. Daddy, I want to ask this question. It is not me direct, but it is my sister, and I don't want her to miss heaven. That is why I want to ask this question on her behalf. My question goes like this. I have a sister, and she has a husband. She is a government worker. And that woman, she is submissive to the husband. She always gives the husband the salary. Every month, she will give him the salary. But what he does is, when she brings the salary, he will collect it. He will say, One and Kisiaka Zamuchi. One and Kisiaka Fanshanu Muchi. He will just list what he wants to eat with the money and she will go to market and buy the money and use her own money to buy the food that they will eat for the month whatever little is remaining that is what he will leave for her and he too is a salary owner he earns salary even more than herself and that is how it has been continued for years but this time around she decided not to give that salary because they have been eating 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 and nothing to show for it and she decided not to give that salary and she now started to make saving and begin to build a house from the saving she is making and since then the husband is not well pleased with her he was even complaining with complaining reporting her to me that uh, she doesn't ask for advice she does whatever she wants to do i was just telling him that a marriage is about patience i don't want to i don't want to interfere to tell him is that this what you are doing is wrong but within me i am not happy and i want to ask because i don't want her to miss heaven daddy is it an offense now that she has decided not to give him her salary and now out of the salary she's building house for them she's saving that money now building the house his cobble has not entered into that building it is through that saving that she's doing out of her salary she's building that house is it a sin uh, matters of two people is a sensitive matter. The Bible says, He that is first in his cause seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searches him out. The person who gives his own report first, when you hear him, you say, Kai, Is that how that man is doing with you? That man is wicked. The man is wicked. Then listen to the man. Ask man to come and talk his own. 
when he finished, you say, uh uh. You mean that is what your wife is doing to you? But what was, it, what was she coming to say here? So your wife is like that? That woman, be careful with her. That is how life is. So hear from two people. Otherwise, they will be confusing you, tossing you to and fro. This is the voice of your sister. And since she is your sister, you support your sister. <laughs> so you are crying for her. Sir, what yes. I'm saying is the truth. It is the truth. But the I truth. cannot justify your sister now. Because I must You know I'm the judge. But I need to hear two people to, to be able to justify it. I must listen to the husband. I must check up why it is like that. To know what caused it so. I want to know before I divide the matter. But in general, uh, in the book of First Timothy, chapter 1, verse 5. This is a general principle affect I mean, I cover, I mean, that uh, I want the women to understand concerning their marriage and concerning uh, maybe their relationship with an unbeliever or with their husband in whichever way. It goes in First Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. And six. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. From which some having swerved, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling. The end, the word end, them in the purpose. The reason why the commandment of God is given to you is to promote love out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of a real faith in Christ. The reason why we say, let your money be submissive to your, be submitted to your husband, along with his own money too. It's not just yours. Let the money come together and decide together. All that comes to promote love, so that the man should see you love him and cherish you. Yes, it comes to show how true and sincere your heart is in the matter of godliness and righteousness that is the purpose and it came it comes the purpose of this commandment is to make you live in the house free and be you are rapturable at every time you are free your conscience is clear and it also affirms your faith in christ that this indeed is a christian but what if, as you are relating with your husband, it is destroying your faith? It is removing righteousness from you. What you do to your husband in the name of obedience is destroying righteousness. I'm saying so because some husbands leave the natural use of their wives and say, I want to use your anus. I, what I'm interested in now is your anus, as, I, as men do in homosexuality. Do you yield to that? Because it's uh, your husband, you must obey your husband? No. Anything that would destroy your faith. The reason why you're doing this thing is for righteousness. It's for peace. It's that children should have food to eat. It's that there should be love in the family. But if this thing is abused, your obedience is abused, that your husband is now seeing you a fool and is using this submission to abuse the cause of God, then he is not qualified to have it. Give not that which is holy to the dogs. Neither cast ye your peer before the swine, lest it tramples it under feet and turns again to rent you. 
So, make sure the obedience should produce righteousness. Where it is not producing righteousness, the money you're giving to him is being abused. There's no more food in the house. Children are not eating. Rent is not being paid. And the house is in darkness. Then there's something wrong in that matter. Praise the Lord. I, I'll finish with you. I'll finish. I'm not answering the question again. So go and sit, stand there now. I'm, I am teaching. I am teaching now. And my question time has finished. The people who are standing before me now are just hearing me and learning. Praise the Lord. So are you getting what I'm saying? Because I give my heart money, heart money to my husband. He uses it for gambling. I, give my, I submitted my money to my husband. He uses it for alcohol. And we're not eating in the house. See the purpose why. The Lord is giving the commandment. If that purpose is not achieved, then obedience to that commandment is not, is, is not working out. It's not producing result. It is being rather abused. Your own precious obedience, don't give it where it will be abused. You are giving the money, but you're not eating food at home. You are giving the money, but it's not helping because the man is abusing the money. You will not do it. You will ask God for wisdom. How do I use this money that we can have food to eat? The children can have school fees. The children can have clothing. God will give you wisdom. Is that okay? So that we don't give you a commandment that is not working out. Rather, it's destroying your faith. No, that's not the purpose of the commandment. Thank you so much. Let's rise up upon our feet and worship the Lord and give glory to the Lord. Thank him for the time we have spent in the question and answer series. Remember tomorrow we shall now review uh, the, the book and give the gifts out to you. Worship the Lord. Give glory to the Lord. Give glory to the Lord. Give honor to him. Have a good day. Talk one to another happily. Share testimonies one with another. What the Lord is doing in the conference. And begin to pray and say, God, tomorrow is the last day. Maybe you have a desire in your heart. God, satisfy my desire. God will hear you. Appreciate the Lord for the enlightenment you have received. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you you are my Lord and Savior I believe in you you are the living Savior I believe Say
You came from heaven You died for my sins You purchased me with your blood You are my Lord and my Savior
Jesus, I will. 